Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today I rise today in support of my amendment as well as the underlying bill. H.R. 4402 is a common sense, pro-growth piece of legislation that would simply facilitate a timely permitting process for very important mining projects throughout the United States. The United States cannot continue to depend on foreign countries to supply critical precious and rare earth metals. This is a vital strategic disadvantage to the security of the United States. What happens if one day a supplying country decides that they don't want to export or restricts precious metals? Or our sea lanes become controlled by those that are not friendly to the United States? These mines are not something that we can just flip a switch and turn on. These mines are multi-million, billion dollar projects that take years of capital investment just to get going. This bill is much a strategic defense bill as it is a jobs bill. According to the University of Minnesota Duluth study, 2.5 ancillary jobs are produced for every mining job. These are good paying jobs that we cannot afford to lose. My amendment will also allow mining projects that have already applied for a permit and are currently in the permitting process access to do expedited procedures. My amendment falls along the same common sense thinking that the underlying bill comes from, that 30 months is plenty of time to complete the total review process for permitting a mine. Currently there are numerous projects in the permitting pipeline that have taken way too long and still have no definitive end in sight. One such project is in my district. The PolyMet Mining initiated environmental review of its uh, proposed North Met copper and nickel mine back in 2005. Since then, the company has invested over $40 million for EIS inquiries. That is seven years and counting for just environmental reviews. Another project that is just getting underway in the 8th District is the Twin Metals Project, which has also produced thousands of Minnesota jobs for both construction and long-term operations. In 2009 study, the University of Minnesota Duluth found that more than 12 thousand Minnesota construction jobs will be created in Minnesota if all strategic metal mining projects currently under study move forward. In 2009, the UMD study also estimated that more than 5,000 direct long-term Minnesota mining jobs will be created when all strategic metal mining projects currently under study become operational. Minnesota needs these jobs and the country needs the minerals that these mines produce and everyone needs a definitive permitting timeline that is reliable. Unfortunately, PolyMet is not a unique project. Seven years and $40 million is not even the worst example of inefficient permitting. Many other mining projects have been stalled for even longer due to inefficient and at times agenda-driven permitting process. Another example is a mineral mine in, Min in Montana. It has been in the permitting process since 2003. The Montanor project previously was permitted by the state of Montana, U.S. Forest Service, and other cooperating federal agencies in 1993, following a full EIS process. The company chose not to proceed with the project until 2003 and has been working to obtain the same federal permits since that time. Mr. Chairman, I could give example after example of how inefficient and onerous our federal permitting process is, but there's just not enough time to do so. These multi-year delays in processing federal permits for many good projects are impeding thousands of jobs, massive investments across the country, and are blocking domestic production of much needed rare earth, strategic, and critical precious metals. This amendment would ensure that these projects, like all future projects, are given a firm timeline that communities can count on, while at the same time more than addressing concerns. I urge support of passage of this amendment and the underlying bill. I'd be happy to yield to the chairman. Remind our colleagues that mines aren't just permitted and then forgotten. They are constantly monitored. The precious metals that we are talking about goes into our cell phones, our computers, our weaponry, even into our catalytic converters. We need these materials now, and we cannot be held at ransom by China. And may I remind them, 600 pounds of copper goes in every windmill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back.